This is Shred, and today I'm going to reveal the secrets of how to become a metal riff lord. Just listen to BTS 69 times in a row. <laughs> Just kidding. The goal in this video is to use 20th century composer techniques like Arnold Schoenberg's Tone Rows and Bernard Herrmann's Excels to give up-and-coming metal gods fresh ideas. We'll also look at Bach-inspired ways to add counterpoint to your riffs. Hand over your soul to get the full tabs on my Patreon page. I've got tons more content there on 20th century composition to satisfy your evil heart's desires. It's all about evil on this channel. The first technique every riff lord should be aware of is pedal tones. Now, a pedal tone is just a repeating pitch. A good example to hear this concept in action would be Randy Rhodes' Crazy Train. The F sharp note is the pedal, continually reminding us of the tonal center. In my opinion, pedal tones are the most important compositional device. The reason is because those repeating tones are like the glue that holds music together. It centers us within a key and provides context for the music. Here's a short riff I wrote using an E pedal tone. It's all about putting the pedal to the metal. <laughs> You're so funny, Shred. Our next compositional device to launch you into Riff Lord status is the C word, counterpoint. Now, counterpoint is a scary word that strikes fear in many guitarists, including myself. You can think of it as just the science of how musical voices move. Composers like Bach were absolute masters of this technique. One of the most important aspects of counterpoint is contrary motion, or moving two voices in opposite directions. Here's an example of me outlining B minor, A, and G chords using contrary motion. You can see the lower voice getting lower and the higher voice getting higher. Try using this idea in your metal riffs to make them more interesting. I always have been a contrarian. <laughs> Tone rows are the perfect compositional device to scare people with evil dissonance. Let's be honest, that's everyone's number one goal. Arnold Schoenberg, the 20th century composer who invented atonality, is most famous for using this technique. The idea is to use all 12 notes of the chromatic scale in a row. The rule is you don't repeat a pitch until all 12 have sounded. For some reason, I always think of Lord Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath and Doom Metal when using this technique. Here's the tone row that I chose. It starts with E and moves through all 12 chromatic notes before landing back on E. Perfect for making your friend's ears bleed.
And to be honest, I did repeat the E once, but that was to make the dissonance more palatable. Keep in mind, rules are just guidelines. The code is more what you call guidelines than actual rules. The last technique we'll cover is sex cells. I mean, X cells. This is an extremely dissonant sound used by the composer Bernard Herrmann in the film Psycho. You can hear the high-pitched screeching X cells in the shower scene. The idea is to play four chromatic notes in a row, called a cell. Intersperse these notes in different octaves and you get a very evil sound. Now let's make some music with this idea. I'll use two cells. The first one uses E, F, F sharp, and G. And the second cell is C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. Now let's make it metal. Probably not the best way to get a Spotify number one hit, but it's a killer way to get that evil sound and please the Dark Lord, which of course we all want to do. Here's an even more dissonant version with the orchestra stabbing those XLs like nails on a chalkboard. Now, I want to know in the comments below, what was your favorite technique? I'd love to hear some of your riffs using these ideas. For me, this is a great way to kickstart my creativity if I'm not feeling inspired. Get the full tab and music below in the description at my Patreon page. I've got an absurd amount of content there on music theory, scales, chords, and composition. Why, that's quite a rousing shred. Yes, it is. Until next time, stay evil, my friends. <laughs>